Hello again, my name is Travis and this is a short instructional video about um, the series of poses referred to often as vinyasa flow. Um, they're a set of movements that link together our practice often from a period of standing postures we, we take a vinyasa flow and then we might end back in down dog and that's the assumption that I'm going to make is that we're going to be pressing back to downward facing dog after these um, three or four integrated poses that create a movement that makes our practice beautiful and beneficial for the front of our body, for the back of our body, for the muscles in our arms and, and in our legs. The important thing here to remember is that perhaps this is, uh, you're a beginner, you've never practiced before, so I'll show you a beginner option. You're also perhaps been practicing for 15 years and you're beginning to notice that doing the, the, the stronger version, the high plank, low plank, up dog and down dog, um, means that by the time you get to your fourth or your fifth, you're a little tired, so maybe you want to switch back to the, the quote unquote beginner um, uh, set of poses. Why I'm talking about that is because it's, it's just something that's come up in my practice over as I've gotten older and um, wiser, um, that you know, this continuous movement of the high to low plank and up dog and down dog um, doesn't have to happen. Uh, you can uh, modify. Modifications are good. Modifications are encouraged. We want to be practicing at 90 and still be wonderful and strong. So what we'll do just to begin is just warming up our wrists because that's going to take a little bit of a load this morning, today. So first and foremost, we'll find some stretches. So take your hands out in front of you, wrap your thumbs in, and then interlace all your fingers over the tops of your thumbs, creating little friendly yogi fist shapes. And then I'm going to shift myself over here onto my all fours by placing the backs of my hands and my knuckles, my backs of hands on the mat and my knuckles come to touch. And then I start to grip the fingers around the thumbs. So the stretch starts to develop. You feel it. If you shift weight forward here, you very much intensify. If you take it further back, you will uh, give yourself a little bit of a breather. But importantly, you continue to squeeze the fingers around the thumb. So it's still creating that fish shape. Now we've got a few more moments. And then from that position, come into a toe stand. So tuck your toes, sit back on your heels. Now feel free to place a block. Feel free not to do this if it doesn't work. Shake out your hands. And then take your interlace of your fingers again. But this time you're going to press your fingers, uh, your palms forward and lengthen the arms. Lift the arms up overhead. Get a little bit of stretch. Maybe do some side body stuff as well. Sweep the hands back down onto the mat, come into a tabletop position. So shoulders are over the wrists, hips are over the knees here. And from this position, take a moment to build that integrity, press away from the earth, and draw the belly button in. And now with the cow spine, tilt the tailbone, lift the chest, look forward, open the throat, reverse all that, chin to chest, dome the back, look back at the belly button, press away from the earth. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Take two or three more, just like that. So moving along your spine and taking this responsibility to move in a way that feels really good in your body. So the last couple there. And then turning into sexy cats. This can be an opportunity to be whimsical, be playful, be creative and organic. So no right or wrong, no need to look at the camera, just move in a way that feels really wonderful and beautiful in your body. I like to change the orientation of my hands so the fingers point back towards the knees, lifting the palms, bending the elbows, getting a little bit of fluidity there. And then come back and meet me in the tabletop position, fingers wide, knuckles grounded. Lift your thumbs, lift your palms, shift forward under four fingers of each hand, hinge to your first row of knuckles, lift and lower the palms. Five, and then four, three, and two, and one. Palms down, thumbs down, sway from left to right across your shoulders. 
And so now I might encourage you to pause for a moment so that you can watch the video rather than be doing it because you can always just replay it as I go through this. But to set up a down dog, I place my hands further down the mat away from me. Fingers are wide, knuckles are grounded. I like to create an L shape with my index fingers and thumbs and my index fingers point forward. But students I know like to have their fingers rotated further out, maybe the thumbs pointing to the opposite corners of the mat. Like it's entirely up to you. Your arms, your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders. So with my setup of my hands, I tuck the toes, take my hips back towards the heels, and lift into a downward facing dog. So the first thing to note here is the flexibility in my body allows my feet almost to be on the ground here in this early stages of my practice, but that's maybe not the case for you. So work firstly from the hands to the shoulders to the hips, and encourage whether you need to bend your knees here and lift the heels. So that will allow for an elongation of the upper body from the hips to the hands and make more integrity in that setup. Rather than worrying about the soles of the feet on the mat and the Instagram pose that looks more like some social media post. So feel free to work with this high heel, bent knees, hips to sky option or let the flexibility lengthen down the backs of your legs and maybe the soles of the feet come to the mat. So as you take a moment now, pause, breathe, and I'm going to show you high to low plank, up dog and down dog. So coming forward to a high plank, so top of a push-up, you recognize that it's nice and strong. And in a, in a gym environment, a push-up might be bend the elbows out wide or halfway down, right? Whereas in our practice, we're encouraging the elbows to come in towards the rib cage and bend at the elbows so we lower halfway down. So lots of strength here, I'm off the mat, I'm not flopped on the mat. Bring the tops of the feet onto the mat, lift the chest so my thighs are lifted. The only thing on the mat is my hands, tops of my, my hands, the tops of my feet. Roll over the toes, down dog. So let's talk in more movement, watch this. High plank, come forward, lots of strength. Low plank, lower halfway down. Inhale, upward facing dog. And then exhale, roll over the toes into down dog. So beginners in the room, and if you're not strong enough at the moment and you're building that awareness in your body, do this, high plank. Lower to the knees, untuck the toes, and don't avoid, <laughs> avoid flopping down here. <clears throat> Try to encourage strength and control to lower the chest and the chin down. And now your back bend from this position is what we call a cobra. So I like to roll and open my shoulder heads by widening my collarbones, pointing the elbows back, pressing the feet into the mat, the tops of the feet. So Grounding the toenails and lengthening along the back of my neck. Press back into downward facing dog. So once more, less talking, more practice. So shift forward, plank, lower the knees, the chest and the chin with control. Slither into cobra. Press back into downward facing dog. High plank, low plank, up dog and downward facing dog. Option two, high plank, lower knees, untucked toes, chest and chin, cobra, tabletop, down dog. Alrighty, how I hopefully helps how you and sees you more on the mat practicing my videos and having a good time. Thank you so much for joining me and see you again real soon. Bye bye.